Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled People, where in today's episode, you'll hear an insane story where a Karen freaking ro- It's ridiculous. A Karen robs an ambulance to get face masks. Guys, buckle up, because there's also three other super entitled stories in the lineup, and I hope you enjoy them, and do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Now, this story is about my mother. My mom is a mega Karen. And unfortunately, I've had to put up with her for most of my life. Now, this happened when I was a teenager, around 15 years old. My mom and I go for dinner at a small local restaurant. I should mention that my mother has long, dark, and curly hair, and she never ties it up, which is important for later. We sat down, get our dinner, and all was going well. I was surprised at how well my mom was doing, because by this point, she should have found something to complain about. And then it happens. I see my mom run her fingers through her hair and let a strand ever so gently fall on her plates where she covered it up with a chunk of beef. My mother Karen looks down at her plates and then said, Oh my god, look at this! There's a hair in my food! Now me, knowing exactly what she was doing, said, Mom, that's your hair. What are you doing? My mom then says, Ugh, no, that's not my hair. This place is filthy. I'm calling the manager right now. So at this point, she was beginning to get louder and drawing attention from the other diners. She continues to cause a scene and getting more irritating and drawing more attention to herself and, of course, to me. I wanted to sink into my chair and die from embarrassment. She even grabs her plates, goes to the table beside us, and showed them the hair, getting them to agree that it was disgusting and that she should be comped for it. Now, not long after she started her fake tantrum, the waitress pretty much ran over to see what the problem was. The waitress says, Hey, how's it going here? What seems to be the problem? Now my mom, pretending to be upset, says, There's a hair in my food. This is absolutely disgusting. Don't you people wear hairnets in the kitchen? The waitress responds with, Um, okay ma'am, I'm terribly sorry. I really don't know what to say. Now my mom, getting furious at the lack of care from the waitress, said, You'd better be sorry. You don't have to say anything. What are you gonna do about it? We deserve to have our meals for free. This is absolutely unacceptable, not to mention extremely disgusting and unhygienic. Now, a smirk comes across the waitress's face. She says, I'm so sorry you're not satisfied with the food. Would you like to speak to the chef? Perhaps bring him out here to formally apologize? Now, my mom, looking smug, thinking she'd won, said, Yes, yes I would. And I would love to tell him to put a hairnet on. You're about to lose a paying customer. Now, I was confused at this point, not understanding why the waitress didn't seem to care. Even though I knew my mom was lying, maybe they caught her on camera or something. But it soon became clear why. So not too long after, a man comes out of the back kitchen and walks right up to the table and my mom's face goes ghost white and her jaw drops. The chef was bald. Not balding, but the man was so bald that you could see your reflection in his shiny scalp. Chef says, Hi there. How are things this evening? I hear you found a hair in your food? My mom says, Well, there is a hair in my food. Someone in the back kitchen wasn't wearing a hairnet. Now the chef smiles at this and says, I'm so sorry to hear that, ma'am, but unless I've miraculously grown a full head of hair on my way to your table, you can see that I'm very much bald. And as I'm the only chef working in the kitchen tonight and my helper is also bald, that is clearly not my hair nor his. Would you like me to call him out as well? Now at this point, my mom was speechless. The chef then said, Is that all for now? I need to get back to work. So without waiting for an answer, he turns and walks back into the kitchen. Now I knew better than to say anything to my mom after this, as rubbing her failure in her face is such a bad idea. But I did have a smile on my face for the rest of the night. It was so embarrassing, having the people beside us that she showed the plate to shake their heads at her behavior. All I can say is, I'm so sorry that your mother is a Karen OP. I'm actually surprised that mom didn't pin it on the waitress though, but she was probably so speechless at the fact that the chef was bald. (laughs) It's so funny. Now, I do want to say that this embarrassing moment might have taught the mom a life lesson in not doing that, but I'm pretty sure this wasn't her first rodeo, and it won't be her last, because hey, a Karen's got a Karen, guys. So, this happened when I was a teenager, but I still think about it here and there. So when I was 17 years old, I got pregnant, and the father, of course, didn't want anything to do with it, which was fine, as we weren't even dating. I intended on putting the baby up for adoption because, at 17, I of course wasn't ready for a child, and I'm sure there's lovely people out there that could love and care and provide for my baby. 
However, my aunt, who already has six kids, five boys and one girl, for some crazy reason automatically thought that my child would be hers once I gave birth. She was also a terrible mother, so there was no way my child was gonna go to her. I asked my parents if they had told her this or anything and they had no idea. All they said to her was that I was pregnant and I was gonna give the baby up. I found all this out when I went to my cousin's birthday. She made a comment about how she was gonna make some room for the baby and I asked, Wait, wow, are you pregnant again? She then laughed and told me, No, when you give me your baby, silly. And at this point, I literally thought that she had lost her marbles. I told her, No, I was giving my baby up for adoption. She just laughs once again and says, sure, that's what I'm saying now. I continue to clearly tell her, no, you are not having my child. Like, this isn't some kind of, can I borrow your Barbie doll for the day? This is literally a human. She continues telling me that I'll change my mind once I meet the baby, and that I'll be glad to give her the baby so I can stay connected with it. So I did give birth, and ended up giving up my baby in the end because she just wouldn't accept the fact that I wouldn't give her my baby. When I went into labor, my mom told my grandpa, who told my aunt, and she turned up at the hospital waiting for me to hand over my baby to her. I was pissed and told her to leave. She finally left, and it was the weirdest experience of my life. So I am close to my cousin, so I've seen her since, but I haven't really spoken to her since. I know my entitled aunt made some comments to my parents behind my back, but to this day, I refuse to find out what she said. Okay guys, so this story is absolutely crazy. If you've been tuning into the channel for a little while now, I've read a few stories where people try to take other people's babies, whether it's buying, kidnapping, or just outright doing what this aunt did and say, hey, uh, just give me your baby. And I guess it happens quite often, as the comments to this post are just flooded with people trying to take other people's babies. This person says, wow, your aunt is insane. I had something similar happen when I was pregnant with my oldest. I was 14 when I fell pregnant and 15 when my daughter was born. My mom's mom always wanted another grandchild, but my mom wasn't fit to carry another child, so she decided to claim my daughter. Even offered me money to sign her over to her. Now this woman spent all day every day drunk, so I wasn't gonna let her get her hands on my daughter. She made my life hell, even calling the police when I got a sitter for a few hours. And this person says, my stepsister did the same thing when I was a teen mom. She asked my mom about adopting my baby. My mom said to talk to me, and I said no. My stepsister couldn't have kids because she was on some strong antipsychotics for paranoid schizophrenia. She even came to the hospital after delivery and she thought she'd take my baby home. She always acted weird at family gatherings and never spoke or looked at my kids. We are no contact for several years. 15 years later and my child is amazing, currently sitting beside me on the couch. Seriously guys, I literally did not know how common it is for people to just want other people's newborn babies. I guess you learn something new every day. So I'm an EMT. The amount of stories about entitled people I have are enough to write a book. But this is one that's so crazy and one of my favorites. So a call is received one night and we head out. It's a worrying call, not corona related. It's an old sick lady that has some other health issues. She is, however, very fragile. They called in a little late hoping it would pass on its own, and it didn't pass, and it got quite bad to the point that going to the hospital by themselves was no longer an option. We arrive at the house in question, no other options than to double park. Nice neighbor waved us down, and my partner and I grabbed the equipment needed, and we're both inside the lady's house. Her husband mentioned that there was a car waiting in front of the ambulance, with the lady inside gesturing angrily. So barely two minutes pass, and a horn starts to blare outside, constantly. Nice neighbor can be heard yelling at someone through the house. And then silence. I then hear a car door slam and an unknown high-pitched voice, which is Karen. It's then quiet for a bit, and then the following can be heard at the doorstep. Karen screams, Get out of the way! I can hear the nice neighbor say, No ma'am, what are you doing? You need to move your car, you're blocking the ambulance. I can then hear her say, Well, it should have just parked in a spot then. There's one right there, why would this stupid ambulance block the damn road? Now move and let me in. I have a child in the car. I've been waiting for 10 minutes. I can hear the nice neighbor say, Ma'am, you're not getting in. Do not touch me. Now Karen is yelling at the top of her lungs saying, Let me in. I need to talk to the ambulance people. And yes, I really did hear the woman scream, Ambulance people. I can hear more yelling and it continues. And my partner says, She's not giving up. I'm calling in a disturbance. The old man with us is getting really anxious and he says, What's her problem? Why does she need to be in my house? I don't know this woman. 
Why does she want to go inside my house? Do I call the police? My wife is sick. Why is she yelling? Now, since my partner did not need my help for the current part, and keeping calm was more important, I went to the door. I answered and said, what's the problem? Now, nice neighbor was about to explain the situation when Karen cuts him off and says, you are the problem. You're blocking the entire road. You should move your ambulance. I know you're an emergency vehicle, but the world doesn't revolve around you guys. People need to go places. I told her that we're on call and please back up and drive around the other side. There's plenty of room to get out. I then try to head back inside and Karen says, Um, no, I'm not the one blocking the road. You are. I'm not gonna back up and go all around just because you decide to park there. I have my six-year-old with me. He's scared and he wants to go home. So I then tell her to just turn your car around and go home then. We're not moving our ambulance for you. This person needs help and you need to leave before we call the police. Karen then says, Oh, well, you don't have to be rude about it. We're all in this crisis together, you know. Now, she then says in a calmer tone, Oh, by the way, are those masks for Corona? You ambulance people probably get the best of the best, right? Do you have any that I can have? Now, at this point, my partner calls from inside and I rush back. The old lady wasn't doing too well. The call was made to take her in as soon as we could safely move her. I run out and get the stretcher. Karen was backed into an empty spot at this point. Meanwhile, a bus had been waiting there parked off to the side for a few minutes, as it couldn't detour like the other cars did. The driver was just patiently messing around on his phone. So I head back inside, and a few minutes later, we get her on the stretcher and we heard the following. We hear, Hey, what are you doing? Get out of that ambulance! Karen screams, I'm just grabbing a mask for my son, they said it was okay! We then walk outside, and sure enough, Karen was standing in the ambulance, making a mess of everything. She's touching equipment without gloves, obviously searching for things. So it turns out the people screaming at her were public transportation officers. They were nearby and had come by to check the situation of the block bus route. They then asked me, Sir, did you give permission for this woman to enter and take stuff from the ambulance? My partner then says, Hell no. She's been making a whole scene and has now contaminated our ambulance. My partner ended up calling for a second ambulance as soon as we walked out and saw the Karen, which luckily arrived as fast as lightning. They ended up having to take the old sick lady in, and she left about 5 minutes later than if we weren't delayed. The transportation officers were still trying to get her to come out. They were not allowed to touch people, but it looked like they were ready to drag her out by the ears. Karen screams, They need to give me a mask! They promised me! Her arguments only became more and more childish, that she had the right of way, there was a parking restriction, etc, etc. They finally got the woman to come out of the ambulance right before the police arrived, and they arrested Karen. She then goes ballistic and starts crying and grasping at her kid, and the poor kid was bawling his eyes out, scared and confused. I really felt bad for the poor boy. The case is clear, with not only tons of witnesses, but also recorded on the ambulance camera, the transportation police's body cameras, and the bus's dash camera. Guys, all I can say is what the heck is wrong with this Karen? I mean, come on, robbing an ambulance for face masks while the paramedics are inside trying to save someone's life? She definitely sounds like she has a few screws loose, and a lot of people in the comments do agree. This person right here says, I work in a psych ER. She needs to go to jail. There's no fixing that. So a little bit of backstory. This happened a few years ago. My parents are the epitome of what makes an entitled parent, and I've got plenty of stories about their antics. So to sum it up quickly, I had decided at 18 years old to run away from them and live overseas, where I am today and quite happy. Now this was the biggest decision of my life, and I was nervous as heck. They had done terrible stuff since my childhood, and I really needed to get away from my own safety and my well-being. I planned the flight about two weeks before the date, and my parents the whole time didn't think I'd go through with it. And to be fair, they only thought I was going on vacation for a short bit. Came the day, and after me calling an Uber to take me to the airport, they caved to save face and took me themselves. So I checked in and did all that good stuff before I had to go through security. I waved them off and began to walk forward until my parents decided to follow me. So here's the conversation between the security guard and my parents. The security guy says, Excuse me, where's your boarding pass? I only see one here. And he points to my boarding pass. My mom says, Oh, don't worry, we're just taking our daughter to the gate. Security responds, Uh, no, I'm afraid you can't go past this post without a boarding pass. My mom says, What? But she's our daughter. You can't tell me what I can and can't do with my own daughter. So I then tell him that I'm 18 years old and don't need anyone to escort me. My mom then glares at me and says, Shut up! 
Security tells my mom, well, she is an adult and does not require accompaniment from her parents. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. My mom then says, but she does. She's not mentally 18. She's mentally regressed and has issues. Now me, being shocked and embarrassed by this, said, what? My dad then goes on and says, she's mentally a child. She still likes Chinese cartoons, referring to anime and manga. Security guy tells them, I don't see how that applies here. She seems capable enough. Do you feel you can go through on your own? I tell him, yes, I'm okay, and my mom says, you're a liar. Just let me through with my daughter. Now at this point, the security guy sighs and calls another security officer over, and he says what seems to be the problem. My mom cuts them both off and says, this jerk won't let me go through the gate with my daughter, who is mentally slow. So the second security guy asks for the real story, please, and security guard one explains in detail. Both of my parents are fuming. They can tell by the looks on their faces that they're not going to get their way, and finally, my mom yells out the most famously awaited Karen line. My mom says, I know my rights. I demand to speak to your manager. So another person comes over, and three of them are talking quietly together, and I tell my parents, Mom, Dad, this is going too far. I'm going to miss my flight if this keeps going. My dad says, and whose fault is that? You should have booked a later flight. It's not my problem if you miss your flight. That's on you. So finally they stop talking and approach us, and the supervisor says, Hi, I think we can make a compromise. I'm not supposed to do this, but I'll allow one of you through with her to have a meal, or just to sit with her for a bit. Now, my mom sees the title on her name tag and said, I asked for a manager. Manager. And my dad says, This is pathetic. Your proposal is also pathetic. How are you going to break up a nice family like this? Supervisor tells my parents, I understand where you're coming from, but OP seems more than capable and is an adult. I am breaking the rules by letting one of you go through without a ticket, but that's my final offer. Now at this point, my mom won't have it. She's screaming, no, no, this is ridiculous. And she's stamping around and waving her arms around. The security has to tell her, ma'am, I'm afraid if you don't stop, I'm going to have to escort all of you away. Me, realizing he means me too, quietly begin to panic a bit. My mom then says, fine, we'll just take our daughter home then. She grabs my arm and tries to pull me away, and I said, stop. So now the supervisor has enough. She looks at me and asks, would you like a parent to go with you? And I said, no, not really. She said, okay, please come along then. And my parents lost it. My mom screams, no, I demand you let us on her flight with all the problems you caused. The supervisor ignoring them turns to me and asked, May I double check your ticket? I told her, yeah, of course. I show her my ticket and she says, perfect. One boarding pass for one person. Step this way and enjoy your flight. My parents then realize that they've messed up and they scream, No, okay, one of us will go through. OP, you like Wendy's, right? Let's get Wendy's. Come on, we'll get Wendy's together. I don't look back and now I'm further away. I can no longer hear them over the line of people I got in, and I got on my flight just fine, and arrived in one piece. I cut contact with both of them. Guys, legend has it that OP's parents are still screaming Wendy's to this day. (laughs) Guys, sometimes you gotta let your parents go. I wish I could see footage of that freakout at the airport, because it sounds absolutely ridiculous. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories today. And if you did, give this video a like. And if you missed yesterday's episode, a Karen doesn't think OP can own a nice house because he's an immigrant. She literally thinks he's some lowly house painter when he's filthy rich. Guys, check it out if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.